Como ven, me encuentro en el Poliforum de Cancún, donde se está llevando a cabo el Campeonato Mundial de Dodgeball, un super evento mundial e interesante, y vamos a ver los pormenores de lo que pasó en este gran evento. Cancún se vistió de fiesta al ser sede del Campeonato Mundial de Dodgeball 2019. La Federación Mundial de Dodgeball y la Federación Mexicana de Dodgeball unieron fuerzas para lograr realizar el mayor evento a nivel mundial de esta disciplina. Los organizadores de este campeonato nos cuentan que es producto de un gran esfuerzo. Es la primera vez que vienen atletas de, de todo el mundo aquí a México. Eh, hemos tenido torneos nacionales, regionales obviamente, eh, de gran nivel, pero siempre es mucho más emocionante tener a países como Inglaterra, Estados Unidos, Argentina. live with the 2019 Dodgeball World Championships. Uh, I'm Bill Fisher. My name's Terry Thrasher. Uh, and we're here with the gold medal men's division match between Malaysia and the United States. We are about to hear the national anthems from both of these teams.
Okay. We are here at the 2019 Dodgeball World Championships live from Cancun, Mexico. I'm Bill Fisher. My name is Terry Thrasher. Terry, what are we about to watch? Well, it's a gold medal match, Bill. Uh, we are going to see Team USA <laughs> against Team Malaysia. Rematch of last year's uh, gold medal men's division as well. Also, as you probably saw a little bit earlier, it's the same countries who competed for the gold medal in the women's division. So uh, these are currently the top two uh, dodgeball nations in the world in this foam style of dodgeball. A lot of, uh, a lot of pride, a lot of athleticism, and a lot of hard work that's been shown to get here. Absolutely. Both sides have been absolutely dominant. Both went 7-1 and one in the round robin. Malaysia came out on top against the United States in the round robin, being uh, their only defeat, and that was the last match of that round robin. So Malaysia coming in with some momentum. We'll see if they can keep that. This is the same matchup from last year's gold medal match. I believe you said that, but um, Malaysia coming out on top. They're, they're going to feel confident coming into this. This men's team has a lot to prove. Also, Malaysia going for a four-peat, if I'm not mistaken. They've won the last three. Yeah, they, they have really been able to establish, uh, I don't know if I'd call it dominance, only because the matches aren't always, like they're, they're usually very close, but at the same time, they've been so consistent at being able to push through uh, the adversity, the adaptations from the other teams, and Malaysia's just been able to execute at a level that obviously lets them close out tournaments. So three times in a row, they're going to try and make it four. They've got a very real chance here as one of the best teams at the tournament. We'll see, though, how this American squad wants to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, all, all four, like, top four teams have been consistently in those top four positions for the last few years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we've seen each of them take each other out, essentially, in, in this round robin. Uh, Canada over Malaysia, Australia uh, over Canada, United States over Canada, Malaysia over the United States. They're, they're all, you know, they've all taken each other out. Yeah, it is pretty tight among the top four. Uh, we obviously saw, you know, it's, it's true in the women's division too. We've seen just like crazy close matches. Both of the women's matches going to literally the closest they can be, overtime forced and uh, a winner a winner being determined and just those bronze medal matches in that overtime period, four minutes extra needed. We'll see what happens with this one. Uh, we did see in the earlier gold medal match it wasn't quite as tight. Uh, we, we won't tell you the exact results, but unless we did it already. Uh, if you're tuned in, you know what it is. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you can find the, the videos on both Twitch and YouTube, uh, on Twitch at World Dodgeball and at YouTube at uh, World Dodgeball uh, Federation. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at World Dodgeball Federation. So you know, like, subscribe, follow us for more information if you you know, if you're enjoying the content, you want to keep following the sport as we continue to try to grow it. Yeah, lots of content out there. You can see videos from past world championships. Uh, your national federation may also have video from previous uh, national level tournaments. It's a lot of content out there if you want to learn a bit more about the game of dodgeball played at the highest level. Yeah, and if you're looking to get invested and uh, looking to, uh, to play, reach out to World Dodgeball Federation, you know, one of those uh, places we saw earlier, they'll, they'll point you to, uh, you know, your, your local scene and you can get started playing. It's a ton of fun, good exercise. Yeah, I think a lot of people are surprised when they first play dodgeball just how much exercise it actually ends up being. <laughs> and it's like exercise that you don't think about. Yeah. Right? Like, I think uh, the most obvious thing is if you just have to throw over and over, it ends up being pretty tiring. But even just staying ready, moving around, evading throws, uh, moving up and down the court with your team, all that stuff will burn the, those calories. My Apple Watch is always fond of telling me how many uh, it burned. Wait, that's not a product placement. I just, I just tend to wear it and it tracks my calories burned. So. Just to, in the same vein, my uh, watch reminded me to breathe during some of the earlier matches today that we were commentating and yep. that I was watching. And I appreciate that because uh, the two bronze medal matches, uh, and this is 100% like, uh, I'm not being, not, this isn't hyperbole. Those two bronze medal matches from today are two of the greatest matches of dodgeball I've ever seen. And this one is going to be another amazing match with either result. This is... Yeah, these yeah. teams are very strong. We've seen a lot of amazing individual moments. We've seen some solid team play. 
Uh, I think I would give the edge in the uh, throwing power, certainly to the American side, uh, but that defensive prowess shown by Team Malaysia is uh, potentially a good counter to it. We're going to end up seeing which style reigns supreme today. We've seen the Americans often feeding balls to Andrew Ketchum. Uh, he's got one of the hardest throws I've ever seen. Mike McGee as well, often holding down the corner, a super hard throw when he steps into it. Looks like we're about to start. And false start oh. to the Americans. First warning. That warning lives on through the through each only for each half. Uh, there are two halves of 20 minutes in dodgeball. Yeah, and what might be tough here is that people may be wary about getting that that step um, a little too early now on the American side because that warning came on the first rush. Yeah, that's that's not what you want. They still get there pretty quickly, though. Ooh, we see. I think just one. Two knocked out. Oh, yeah. Hashimoto and Dylan Clark Oden. Yeah, Clark Oden knocked out at the end there. Ketchum takes a shot. Yeah, fun fact. When Ketchum's on a roll, he will yell, hungry, hungry hippo, and ask for a ball. Ooh, takes out a Cedro Perez. That was an amazing dodge into a catch attempt. Yeah, we're going to see, I think we are going to see uh, Ketchum taking a few more of those shots from the bag. Nate Kreider on the left side, just such a smart player. He's so good at the counterattacks and the pressure. The, Ketchum uh, was hit on the way by. It looks like we're down to two. Yeah, this Malaysian squad uh, doesn't tend to go for catches from what we've seen. Uh, they do prefer to go for, uh, you know, just getting out of the way of the ball, um, staying alive. Yeah, um, great blockers. Great sense of timing. We see Pyong on the left corner today. And it's Haragar and Ravichandran with the shot. He's got a big arm, probably the biggest arm for this Team Malaysia side. That is number 18 on your screen, if you can read those jerseys. I love them, but they are, well, they're a little easier to read than the uh, white and gold number Team Malaysia had earlier. Ooh, big Kreider shot. knocked out. Yeah, Kreider. Not able to block that one. McGee is facing down six. He's right. up to the challenge, but it is going to be tough. And I think he got the back line. Yeah, yep. referee saying his hip. All so, six remained on the court for Team Malaysia. Uh, yeah, that was that, a dominant performance. That's got to feel good for their team. A full six finishing off the point. Uh, I don't think we're going to see too many of those kinds of points, though, in this match. Um, Team Malaysia also favors, at least from what we've seen, uh, playing from that back line almost, preferring to take those counter shots and the uh, aggressive defensive transition in offense. Uh, we see Shang taking a shot that is blocked by McGee. McGee again, big jump by Shang. And I think in the, in the scramble, Malaysia still ends up with the extra ball, so... Kreider with some pressure. McGee as well. Tagged out onto Ketchum. Nope. Ketchum's okay. Yeah. It is just Hashimoto on the far side. Okay. We have uh, tempo control on the side of the United States. This Malaysian squad. They're so uh, single voiced in their, so to speak, in their uh, simultaneous cheer for every hit. It's, it's intimidating. Uh, we can hear that cheer coming pretty much every solid hit they land. That is not one of those hits. That's a good block by Isidro Perez. Four balls to the side of the United States. Once again, this game does slow down once uh, every player on your side can hold a blocking ball reliably. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's a big jump in uh, survivability being able to take, uh, take the opportunities you want for catch attempts or just having an extra ball to keep you safe. And Malaysia, not a team that, that gets sucked into too many uh, reckless back and forth. They are willing to be patient. One thing I really like from the Malaysian team, too, is they tend to keep a really bland facial expression. Like, they will let themselves get fired up, but when they get hit out or when they make a mistake, you see them just kind of take a deep breath and, and stay composed. One thing I definitely noticed in their matches against Canada earlier in this tournament. Yeah, they're, they're definitely a team that is very well composed. Knocked up, Kreider knocked out. Yeah, that shot from Shang connecting. Malaysia not with the hardest throws necessarily, but great disguising of them, great accuracy. They have a lot of good movement on a lot of those shots too. 
And as we've seen, they survive incredibly well to keep using those shots. Again, we see all six remaining on the court for Malaysia. The U.S. hasn't connected yet. That's, that's going to be a, you know, we talk about pressure not winning yet, but not hitting yet. That's going to be even more pressure. Yeah, it is tough. I mean, we've talked a bit about how getting that first point is important for your morale, but getting the first actual elimination is going gonna, is gonna to be important for the American side at this point. I have no doubt they will eliminate their fair share of players in the match, but we got to start soon. Oh, wow, what a grab by Sheng. Not the connection that Team Malaysia wants, uh, that Team America wants. Yeah, Sheng catching that one as he jumps a little, and McGee hit out once again. Malaysia six on the court. That catch didn't even need to bring anyone back. Four and a half minutes played in the first half, and so far, Team Malaysia looking really strong. Yeah, no, no roster ships for this American side. No false starts either. We see the athletic dodging attempts. Everybody's safe this time. Big pump fakes by both sides, forcing a lot of moves, but sometimes that's all you want is just to tire out your opponent. Now we see that shot taken from a little bit farther back. That skims in. That is Robert C.K., who's been on this team, I believe, the longest out of any of the individual players. And we see in that back and forth, I think we only see one casualty as McGee heads off. Looks a little disappointed. Yeah. Okay, tempo control for this United States side. Big shot by Clark Oden, popped up. Oh, can't get the catch though, good work. We saw in the women's match, uh, the same thing happened and they you know, pushed it back into, back into play and made the catch. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what Robert was trying to do. He jumped and if he was uh, still alive, he would have been able to try and pop that ball back toward his team. Catch him taking a throw from a safe distance. Haragarin retaliating, Kreider hit out. That uh, is a block from Hashimoto until it wasn't. Those balls are in neutral territory. Americans pressing up aggressively. They get one of them. So they do at least have one elimination. Robert over on the sideline pacing a little bit in the queue. This would be a big win if Malaysia, Malaysia gets it. A 3-0 lead is a substantial one. Aragaran, the biggest throw. We'll see if he takes it. He is the one who takes it this time. And just kind of twists away. Three balls to the side of Malaysia. And it's Sheng this time. Cleanly blocked by. That is Clark Oden. Once again, this Malaysian team is just so acrobatic, so to speak. And their ability to stay alive is, is incredible. The last few times they've elected to throw from the middle so that those corners could keep pressure. This time it's the right side. Oh, we saw Pham almost collapsing on that ball, but that is a hit for the Americans. Perez with a big shot. He can just kind of step into it from the corner. Yeah. But it does miss the mark. Cedro also being a lefty is... Uh, ooh. Americans are almost playing this in a Malaysian style that they're playing from that back line, right? Not letting, uh, not letting the Malaysians take any free shots. Connects. Haragarin. Well, that was a solid one. Brings us down to a three-on-three. -three. Team USA trying to get their first point. It's going to get a little closer. Yeah. Momentum for this United States side. David Huang hit out. We hear the USA chance coming. Now there's a catch as well. Great work for this United States side. Uh, we saw McGee come back in. And this is Pyong, and that was Pyong. As you, like we'll let that cheer play out. Yeah. We have a match. Yeah, Team USA on the board. Obviously, you uh, you got to get your points before the opponents get too many. So 
Uh, just under eight minutes gone. Team USA only down by one now. You saw the blocking balls popping up that throw and into an easy catch for the American side. One for one off the rush. Clark Oden hit out. We also see Huang hit out. And now Team USA with four balls coming up. It's Kreider's throw. Ooh. Oh, sorry, catch him. Nice staggered throw there. Gets him down with the blocking ball, and Isidro hits him uh, right over that blocking ball. Good work. Kreider with the shot. Countered by Malaysia. Catch him. Chucking from uh, 50 feet away. Maybe 45. I'll be charitable. <laughs> These balls don't uh, these balls don't slow down very much as they move. Catch him, hit out. Yeah, that was a great shot right at his leg as he tried to go low. We know he can catch from that position as well, but that ball placed perfectly. Haragarn getting under that one. McGee under the return shots. Team Malaysia with just two left. Clear is Haragarn that got the out on catching, correct? Uh, let's say yes, <laughs> because I didn't quite see it. I just saw the hit. And the second ball, again, like great timing from the Americans. They get Sheng out. Yeah, they're, they're doing great on connecting with some of these cross courts. Nate Kreider with the pressure. Robert C.K. in that right corner. You hear Hashimoto Eli, cheer. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Robert drawing attention away while Haragaran just yeah. snaps a shot off. Great teamwork there. That's what I mean. They really direct your attention one way and then attack from another. Even though it's so often Harigaran throwing, he still seems to be able to find some amazing shots. Cedro Perez gets on that block. Cedro Perez so good at keeping pressure while attempting to dodge. and His release is so fast and he keeps his feet moving. He's, he's something else. By Perez on Haragarin. Yeah, that is what they needed. Don't let a player just mow you down. Just uh, if you can take that catch, maybe he'll have to think twice about where he's putting those balls. Pyong hit out as well. Robert CK, the only one left for his side, facing down against three. Kreider so good at drawing in the balls and timing those counters. Clark Oden, the one that sealed the deal. He came up big for that first American win. Nice defense by Isidro Perez. And that ball bouncing just shy on Kreider. Robert C.K. Last in on the court. Hey, he's still got a couple of balls available to him, plus two more on the sideline. Throwing a little bit safely. Good work there. Once again, that counter tends to be... Uh, Ooh! Kreider makes that block. Yeah, Dylan Clark Oden wanted that second catch. We're very close Ooh. to the line from CK. Literally towing that line once again. It's such, these players have such amazing court awareness, they know exactly where they are. And now it will be the USA's turn to attack. And they connect. We see Robert C.K. off, and the Americans tying it up 2-2. Two to two. Malaysia trying to four-peat. Oh, USA oh, trying to take their first four, one in years. Russia, two, USA, two. Yeah, it will be a slugfest, though. It's still 2-2. Two I would not be surprised if it stays really tight for oh. the full duration of the match. Absolutely. These two teams have a, a very uh, entertaining combination of styles and in that when they match up, uh, they almost have the opposite uh, philosophy on the game, so to speak. Yeah, I think we, we do see defense first from Malaysia, offense first from Team USA. Not that either team is incapable of playing to the other's game somewhat, but we talk about uh, wanting to set the pace. And yeah, that is a hit. Looks like Bam not able to block it cleanly, that ball bouncing off his blockers. I think that's the first uh, out that Ketchum's made, but I, I could be mistaken. 
yeah, if he gets going, we fully expect him to be able to knock out multiple players with that big throw. And he is tagged out. Ooh, that ball almost connecting with McGee on the ricochet, but it is just Ketchum heading to the sideline to join his teammate. Five on four, Malaysia edge. Oh, McGee, I think he's okay. That one skipped. There's also something about, you know, this is the one and only match they'll play today. And so this is also a match on which team can play their first match and be ready, you know, as fast as possible into that match, right? I, I know when I play, it can take three or four matches sometimes to feel like I found my flow. And these teams have to be ready just for this gold medal match. This means so much. Nate Kreider tapped out there. Nice shot by Haragarn. Yeah, he has been the eliminator for this Malaysian team overall. Would not surprise me if he was a focus. Ooh, that ball focused right on Robert CK's leg. Beautiful shot getting under that blocker. I think as uh, Alyssa, said, Alyssa said it earlier this week, the unmistakable uh, sound of the ball on the thigh. And there's another connection as well under the chest. I think we got a double on that shot. We see Pyong heading off with Wong. Aragarn now in that left corner. We see a shot from Sheng. Sheng, who's in the corners. Back on Hashimoto. Yeah. Sheng's so dangerous out of that corner. He stays alive so well. He places those shots so well. We see him threatening. We see him jumping now and on the attack. Ooh, McGee with a block. <laughs> that ball is in neutral-ish territory. <laughs> Team USA's throw because that ball is on their side and Malaysia threw last. It's an awkward position to be in. Malaysia's Ooh. gonna try and make sure that ball stays where it is. Oh, nice, nice block from McGee. He doesn't need those elbows. He's willing to land on him. Slips a little bit. That was something else. I. Yeah, we talked about the athletic dodging of the Malaysians, but uh, how about Mike McGee? Mike McGee and Hashimoto, Jeff Chivinko as well, are such athletic dodgers. They, they give their whole body for the dodge. Now it is that situation again where Team USA has to throw. They're going to come up for that ball. Malaysia's like, hey, no. McGee with the big fakes. Malaysia takes. Ooh. And this time the Team America. Finally, America gets that ball. That was yeah. kind of hampering them there for a bit. Oh, Haragarn hit out on that third one. Yeah, but it takes three. One ball for the side of the United States. Big Sheng. dodge by Perez. Sheng, one of the foundations of this team. He's still in it. And that one popping up, spinning back. Perez takes his shot. Those balls Ball hit in midair. Perez hit out. McGee charges. Sheng is hit on the back. And Mike McGee makes it count. America gets their first lead of the match. Yeah, that's timeout called for Malaysia. We've seen these timeouts be incredibly effective. We usually see these timeouts between the 10 and the 5 minute mark. Usually you get two or three matches with a timeout at that point. These teams make these, um, these adjustments, minor ones typically through timeouts. And then we see bigger adjustments come in the halftime depending on how those adjustments, uh, that early timeout uh, gives them. Uh, and we've seen massive comebacks and massive changes in momentum with them. Uh, the Canadian women's team had a nine point uh, in a row after some of their uh, the adjustments they've made. So, I mean, the Americans have the lead, but uh, I think Malaysia's going to reconvene, get their, their confidence together, boost each other up, and this is a match. Yeah, we get 90 seconds for each team to talk things over, and Malaysia's still in their huddle. Once again, this is the 2019 Dodgeball World Championships live from Cancun, Mexico. We are here on Championship Sunday with the gold medal match between Malaysia and the United States. Malaysia looking for their fourth gold medal. And Team USA, silver medal winners last year. I'm sure they're looking to upgrade that this year. They've got the squad to do it, but uh, obviously taking on the defending champs who still have a lot of roster continuity. And the referee is saying, hey, time to get back to it. Is uh, Devon Van Dyke, referee, also uh, has coached Team Australia in the past. 
I actually heard uh, when the referees' names were being announced, we actually heard Australians cheering specifically oh. for their man Devram. Okay, both sides choose not to engage on the uh, on the rush. Ketchum takes Ketchum a shot. Connects. CK hit out. Robert will head off to the sideline. Ketchum likely to throw again. He does. Oh, and he Ooh. can't squeeze that one. He wanted that catch so bad. We have seen Malaysia targeting Ketchum when they think he is exposed on his follow through. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a big target. And yeah, referee saying that looked like an out. Fam discussing it. Oh no, sorry, that is not Fam. I believe that's Simonite. Norm Adam Simonite is the uh, subject of this discussion. <laughs> Ouch. Out is confirmed. Can be hard to tell, of course, but we did have a couple of refs looking right in that direction. Yeah, all these refs, very experienced from these all over the world. And as we pick up, Team USA with the player edge this time, but Malaysia with the ball edge, and they convert it into a kill. Hey, we see Jeff Giovinko out on the court for the first time this match. Yeah, we see that shot missing, and... Hardgarn staying alive. Yeah, that ball bouncing just short. They do so much work putting pressure, 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 but they're so good at staying alive. Hashimoto hit. I think the first one got him, too. Ooh, right hit as well. Beautiful shot from the Malaysians. Yeah, they're, they're taking advantage of a moment where maybe Team USA thought, okay, the attack has come. McGee hit out, though, and we see Malaysia come out of their timeout with yep. the first point. That momentum is on the side of Malaysia. Three and a half minutes, still in the first half. We got a 3-3 score. Still a very close match. It's going to be super hard for either team to actually pull away. So I'm going to play staying alive, but connects. Yep, Pyong hit out. So Team USA this time with the edge. Yeah. Pyong, one of the longtime veteran, right? Yeah, he's been on the team for, I think, four years himself. He's been a solid performer. We see, ooh, McGee getting so low. Big dodges from both sides, really. Yeah. These teams are so, so much agility and, ooh, staying alive. Sometimes they make the little dodges. We just saw a little just kind of <laughs> turn to the shoulder away as you said that. Yeah. Ketchum's a big target physically, uh, physically and court presence wise. And that ball popping up just a little too far for any of the teammates to pick it up, so Fam will take his spot on the side. We have two, about two minutes left in this first half of the 2019 Dodgeball World Championships. Team Gold USA. medal match. Big shot. Yeah, we see Simon Knight heading over to the side. Team USA just kind of feeding, catching and catch him and letting him hit. Perez getting under it, looking for the catch. He's pretty capable at that kind of fall back move. We've seen him and Garcia Silvera using on the Canadian side as well. Great pressure by Gunting there in that right corner. Hardgarn with two, most likely to throw. Goes for McGee, but McGee gets under it. Yeah, Gunting returning to the team. He was one of the most solid members of this squad last year in Los Angeles. And we see that Ooh. shot on Perez. He's, uh, he's mad he didn't hang on to it, but it was yeah. a tough one. He's known for his catching in the States and his incredible release. And we see McGee shielding catch him there. Some leagues, some players like to uh, trench, as they call it, putting a player with the ball in front of one or more teammates. That was an ad hoc trenching by Team yeah. USA. Yeah, good work keeping your team alive. Once again, this is a, a we, not a me sport. Right? Yeah. You're here to win a championship, not make plays. Hashimoto now in the corner. He is elusive himself. And 
And it's McGee with a big shot. Under the foot of CK. Matt Robert CK heads over to the sideline and timeout. Called by the American side this time. Okay. I believe it's uh, Gunting and Haragarin left on the side of Malaysia. This is a big point, though, for either team to go into the half of the lead. Yeah, exactly. We've seen that momentum go back and forth. Neither team able to really run with it. Yeah, staying neck and neck this whole time. When, uh, when we uh, get down to the zero second mark, we will go to no block to finish out the half. Whatever match is still in progress, we'll, uh, you know, that's how we'll finish it up. Uh, if a player blocks, they, uh, they are out. Uh, they can make a catch with the ball. Um, but look for both teams to start with three balls. So look for, as we get down to that zero second mark, that these balls are just fly. They're trying to make that last second connection before we go into no block. See Team USA with a deep bench. They've got players like uh, Eric Stone, who's been on this team and anchoring it many, many times. I think he is a co-captain this year as well. And uh, he hasn't even been used yet. He's still in reserve if Team USA needs him. Glenn Spacher as well, long-time high-level player for the national program. Uh, each, of these, uh, each of these players on this team has a different role as to what they bring to the team. So for different matchups, you know, you might, you might be used, you might not be used, but you're, you're, they're here for a reason. And Team USA shoots, it's blocked. Gunting. 30 seconds. And we see Haragarn and Gunting coming up. It's a shot from the right side. It does miss. 20 seconds now. Team USA is going to come up, take at least one shot, try to set up that overtime no blocking period. Ooh, big hit on to McGee. Catch, catch him now. Well, catch him showing restraint. Yeah. Seven, Never mind. Six. He did have his corners there to back him up. Yeah, and none of those last three shots do any damage. 60-foot shots, top-level players. Yeah, they're capable of making them. They can dodge at 30 feet, they can dodge at 60 feet. <laughs> it is interesting, though, the, the type of shots you get at 60 feet are different than those you'll get at 30 feet. The ball has more time to bite into its curve and will have a completely different angle at, coming at you. And big hit right away on Haragarin. Oh, we see Gunting popping those balls up, trying to give him a block Connection. chance. Hashimoto finishes it off. Team USA goes into the second half with a 4-3 advantage. I do think the no blocking period tends to favor Team USA because they do have the throws and they do have the catching ability to really uh, take advantage of the fact that blocking is taken off the table. That said, this Malaysian squad has surprised me many times by just really been able, being able to connect with shots and uh, that elusiveness is still in play even if they can't block. So while I do think it favors Team USA, uh, it is by no means a sure thing. Absolutely. I, I think you're right that it does favor the United States. We talked earlier about how the United States tend to be more offense driven, right? We, we've seen that. Uh, Malaysia more defensive driven, so you know, part of that defense is you know how well you block. See a lot. I got to give it up to the Malaysian side. They're so good at blocking and pinching that ball to the ground and not letting it roll back to the American side. We are going to get back to the action in a minute or two here. Team's still talking it over. We see Malaysia actually in a huddle. We've seen them be able to adjust to what their opponents are doing pretty reliably. And I think... I, I don't think we're going to see Team USA pull away here. No. Uh, but they're going to try. Yeah, I, this, this match is going to be close, right? But both sides, we're going to have two timeouts again. United States no longer has the false start warning to worry about. Um, 
hey, even though they got that false start on the opening opening rush, uh, they kept everything under control. They were still very quick to the balls too, but I think it's going to be a little bit of extra freedom knowing that they don't have to, well, they have that warning to spend if they if they do jump a little bit early. So, Also surprising to see, I think the last two or three matches, uh, sorry, two or three games have uh, had a reduced number of like opening rush shots. I think they've both been playing rather conservative in those in those openings. Yeah, it's true. We've seen both teams. They're so quick getting to the ball, and they've got such uh, capable throwers with good releases that you often expect to see those shots taken on the rush. But there is a time and a place. Sometimes they choose to play it defensively. And we are getting those teams lining up. We are going to get this second half underway shortly. Team USA looking to pull ahead. Team Malaysia looking to stop that and yank them back. Or, I mean, just catch up. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Yeah. We, right now, the momentum on the side of the USA. We, we talked about four teams make bigger adjustments going into that halftime. With Malaysia losing that last one, I think they're going to have a better idea of what there is to change, where there's more confidence on that US side and might not change as much. Yeah, I, I think that the half times and the stoppages tend to favor the team that don't have the momentum in that moment. That's a little trickier to keep everything rolling when you're not actually playing. But off the start, we see one in each direction. And we're in that ball rolling back from Team Malaysia's side to Team USA's side. And then they kick a ball out of bounds. That's going to take a bit of the time off of the shot clock, but Team USA is going to be able to attack anyway. And everybody survives. Tempo control for the United States. They have four balls. They only need to throw one, and that means they'll get to play man-on-man -man coverage come defense. Yeah, and that is the plan this time at least. So Team Malaysia coming up to the line. It is a shot from the right side. That's Sheng. And he just goes low as he backs up, avoids the incoming shot. Gunting holds down the corner. And that time he's the one who throws. Same kind of dodge. You see him uh, just go low and keep kind of retreating at the same time. <laughs> We're also seeing uh, Hashimoto move to that left corner. Mike McGee getting tapped out. A confident shot from Pyong. Just kind of waits out the moves from McGee and then takes him out. And speaking of being taken out, you see a hit onto Norm Adam Simonite. Oh. And a double. Yeah, double out. You can't count on those, but they're always welcome when you're on offense. Now that is a tough break for Team Malaysia. Ketchum takes another shot and makes catch a catch. Catch him. Jung unhappy with himself. And wow, we see another catch. The response. And Hashimoto's ball caught. Malaysia sends two toward McGee, who was brought back in. Five on four, favoring the Americans for now. Catch him, not the one who throws. I'm always surprised Shang. when it's someone else. Yeah. Shang with the shot, coming up a little bit short. And we see a ball connecting with Clark Odom. Yeah. Great shot. He's been so valuable in matches such as Australia, where his job was to win that opening rush, take out Dez. Yeah, I think that one did bounce before it hit Perez. It was a low throw. The Americans do have to throw. They have more players, even though they have the same number of balls. Ooh, nice, nice shot from Giovinco. Missing catch him, takes a shot anyway. And we see a bit of that point coming across from Malaysia. We don't want to see too much of that. We also see how we see some of the teammates saying, no, no, don't get into that. The referees are talking a bit. I think if things stand, catch him with the block, returning the shot onto Wee Sheng. And on the replay, it's hard to tell exactly what happened there. We got all the suits coming over now. Refs convening. We have uh, Carlos Benjamin Gunting, the captain this year for Team Malaysia. 
in the huddle and Coach Lucas as well. And it does look like, as the refs called it, we've got Ketchum in, Shang out. Okay, this is the second half of this gold medal match between the United States and Canada. We've got 17 minutes left, I believe. Ooh, those, those two players bunching up a little bit. That is dangerous, yeah. but they're in it. They can take a shot. That one going well over Andrew Ketchum. Yeah, you can see Ketchum wanted that shot. He was looking for it. Ooh. Shang almost stepping on that Super line. Super close to the back line there. Ooh, Ketchum next with Ketchum. Nice shot by Robert C.K. It looks like Huang is... I thought he was out. Yeah, the referee's confirming it. Team Malaysia down to just Robert CK. Team USA still with three. Talking things over. They send one. CK, such pressure. Givinko staying alive. Cedro Perez with the uh, McGee. Staying safe. Uh, McGee not afraid to throw himself to the ground to get out of the way of those balls. Robert CK in the corner. Does get hit off feet. So that is a uh, unusual in these playoffs, a two-point lead for a team. Update from the uh, update from our media team. Shout out to we. This isn't a, a two-man effort up here. We have a lot of people out there uh, working in various ways to keep us informed, so we can keep you informed. They let us know that Malaysia uh, was given a warning for self-refing, which is when you are trying to call the other team out. Yeah, yeah, we did see a bit of that, the, the pointing across the line and the uh, what I call the no-no finger being waved by one of the uh, Malaysian players. You do not want to get into that. The referees will shut it down, and they will shut it down by removing players if need be. Garden connects. Uh, Shang hit out, Malaysia with the extra balls. Ooh, we see a big shot toward Ketchum. I don't... Russ are going to talk. I don't know if he got both feet and we can't see it from this angle. On the American side uh, calling it a catch, but... I mean, either way, Ketchum is out. He fell out of bounds to make it. Yeah, there is no coming back in on momentum catches. But does the catch count is the question. Regardless, that was an amazing amount of effort. I think we're going to get a bit of a second look here on that. It definitely hits him. Yeah, and... Oh, does that second foot go down? Yeah, it's like an NFL receiver trying to drag the toes. I could definitely see one foot down. I could not tell if both were... Catch! Sounds like it is a catch. Back to it. Team USA has five. Ooh. Ooh, five balls and none of them connecting. Yeah, Pyong gets one ball, the other puts to the other corner, which is Gunting, I believe. Pressure, pressure, pressure. I like the smooth fakes out of uh, yeah. Gunting. It's not a violent motion the way some other people's fakes are. Cedro caught out Close. in the middle. One ball for Hashimoto to put some counter pressure there. We see Robert CK, Haragarn, and who is that Le right corner for that this? That is Pyong. And we see those return shots missing. Pressure from Hashimoto. He is hit. And so is Haragarn. Okay. Haragarn, Ravachandran, that big arm for Team Malaysia. And U.S. will gladly take a one-on-one -on -one trade here. With the yep. player advantage, enough one-on-one -on -one trades is a victory. And yeah, the referees indicating to the sidelines, go away, let us talk. Let's see if we can find out a little bit more about what's happening in the refinery of referees. The refinery of referees. This is the 2019 Dodgeball World Championship. 
We're live from Cancun, Mexico. You can continue to follow us at World Dodgeball Federation on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can find us on Twitch at World Dodgeball. Please like, subscribe, follow, and if you uh, are finding this sport interesting, continue, uh, continue following us and seeing how this sport grows. Next year we'll have a cloth division. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be the first time under the WDBF banner that we have uh, a foam and cloth division. So that'll be really interesting. I only have a little bit of experience playing cloth myself, not a lot of experience even watching it. So I'm looking forward to getting a lot more exposure to that type of dodgeball. Speaking of exposure to cloth, right after this, we're going to have an exhibition between the Great Britain uh, and Mexico teams as a transitioning handoff yep. from the hosting country to the next hosting country as Great Britain, uh, I believe, is hosting next year. Yeah, we will see uh, those teams mixing it up and giving us a taste of cloth action. Uh, we don't have a, an exact cloth court drawn on the, uh, like on the floor here, so I know that they are doing a very slight adjustment to the dimensions, but otherwise it's going to be pretty much what you'd expect. Yeah, we have uh, a, cloth, a cloth specialist commentator to join us here to explain the game and the differences from the foam game. Yeah, I'm going to need to listen to that. There are, yeah, I've done one season and a couple of tournaments of cloth, so I am nowhere, no expertise really, just a little bit of familiarity, and that's all. Yeah, my commentary would be he threw ball, he caught ball, he got hit by ball. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're hoping to bring you something a little more sophisticated and nuanced than that. And that will be coming up after this gold medal match between yeah. Team USA and Team Malaysia. If you didn't catch our earlier games today, the bronze medal matches that are up on our YouTube and our Twitch that we mentioned earlier are two of the greatest matches I have ever seen. Catch that if you missed it after this. Team USA using up that shot timer. Robert shooting and Goon, sorry, Pyong shooting. Entire US squad going to the ground to get under those. God, there are three of them on the court. Catch! Oh. I think Robert indicating that he thought it was all ball, but the referee did not agree. So it is Pyong. I think there. this is a Jane Vinko throw. Nope. Yeah, that was a nice shot through the block immediately on Pyong. And Team USA, 1443 remaining in the half. Team USA with a 6 to 3 advantage. I got to give it to Jeff Giovinko. Uh, looked like he was. Uh, winding up for his curve shot which is usually a tell that he's going to throw but nope came from McGee and yeah, McGee as you saw throwing it right down that sideline and now the Malaysian team will set up for another rush Woo! Shang with a big jump jump and release such athleticism from this Malaysian team yeah, it's fun to watch. I really like the way they move. I wish I could move even a little bit like they do. Harigar in a big throw down the middle. Skips it between a couple of players. And then we see the throw from Perez that time. Pops up and back to Team Malaysia. Sorry, Team USA side. When you throw a ball and it comes back to you, you can't be more you can't even be more happy than that. That's the best shot you're gonna get. Shang making the call for his team. That one misses. Team USA coming up. And I think yeah, getting catching. caught. Not caught, but like caught out of position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was up, he was exposed. Team Malaysia took their shot on him as we figured they might. Ooh, that ball sailing way high. Um, Hashimoto hits the line. You can't even touch the lines here. These lines are lava. You are out the second you touch them. And we see some good dodging that time. And another ball thrown. Malaysia showing a little more aggression. They don't need to push the pace too hard, necessarily. They've got over 13 minutes remaining in this match. McGee with a big fake after going low under that ball. This is the second half. This gold medal match between the United States and Malaysia. 13 minutes left. Nice Pyong with block. a good block. Yeah. Haragar unlikely to be the taker. No, it's Pyong this time, and it's a catch. It's Giovanko. 
Good job playing that patiently, though. A lot of times a player will make a catch and make an immediate move feeling rushed, and they'll throw a catch themselves. But this team coming together, slowing things down. So one of those Cirque du Soleil dodges on the side from, uh, I believe that was Sheng. Great movement out of him. Nice block. Nice block. Pressure, catches, catch him out. Counter, counter, counter. Our Curry guard Warren this time. Gets McGee. Referee's going to talk it out again. They are summoning the officials from the back lines as well. Everybody talking things over. There is a warning for spiking that was given earlier. I'm not, I'm not sure who that was to. I think that's the celebratory uh, spike of the ball, perhaps. Yeah. It seems likely. Well, as things stand right now, we've got three on three. Uh, an awful lot of balls in the hands of Team USA, and not very many in the hands of Team Malaysia. That one ball in a dangerous area if they want to go up and retrieve it. That's unfortunate. Connects with Haragaran. Isidro Perez takes another shot. Playing to that ball is dead just to verify. And we see the return shot from Robert missing two shots his way. Robert faking now. And Robert yeah. CK is so good at making those moves, putting all that pressure and staying alive. This whole Malaysian squad is good at it. See them throw two balls, that return. Perez hit out, it's a two on two now. Sheng and Robert going to try and get Team Malaysia back to their scoring ways. When I say, by the way, that Malaysia is good at putting pressure and staying alive and dragging balls in, I meant to say uh, fantastic, excellent, and any other word that would sound like hyperbole, but is 100% true. Those shots weren't the strongest, though. They fell short, and now Team USA is going to get to face off. Robert, I think, did get hit on at least one of those balls. One on one. This Sheng. is Jeff Giovinco's first time on this roster. Sheng and Giovinco. Eleven minutes remain in the second half. This is one of those major points. Chivenko throwing a curveball. Shang casually to the line with a block and a miss. Shang likes to hold those three balls. Likes to have that other one available to him. A drop shot coming out of Chivenko. Shang decides to throw. Chivenko decides to go low. Shang holding the line. And everybody's uh, pointing. The referee's telling everybody to back off. So I think they're going to come together to talk about the timing of what happened, because I believe both, both throwers did hit their targets. Yeah. If the referees can clearly determine which player was eliminated first, they will be able to say who takes the point. If they can't, they may just call it a wash and ask the players to continue. That's pretty close. And it, from the replay perspective, it goes behind that, that crowd of people on that right side, that little cluster. Doesn't look like we can tell. All right, the ref's saying that the timing made it clear that Giovanni took the point. The United States takes a 7-3 lead. There is still plenty of time to win three matches and get one second left on that clock for that Malaysian squad. Yeah, we have seen we have seen Team USA be able to slow down the pace and really use the, the threat of those throws to kind of control the pace. I would imagine we'll see them play it a little more defensively now. Team Malaysia will have to push the pace. They'll have to take a few more counters. They'll have to connect on a few more shots, frankly same time we've seen this Malaysian squad get momentum within a game and just bang 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 out 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 
This Malaysian squad can pick up tempo in games so quickly if they see confident openings. They may have tried to pick up a little too much tempo as I believe that was a warning toward Pyong for a false start on the run. First warning of the half to Team Malaysia. And right away it is Shang with a big Ooh. shot. Mark Roden taking a shot to the neck. The Americans up with four balls. Catch him throws. It is catch. Oh, the confidence. Catch him, catch him. A sign of respect, though. Yeah, as Gunting jumped and uh, was looking, I think, mainly to block, he was able to secure the ball. Nice play. Even if that wasn't your plan, you got to be good to squeeze it. So when the refs convened, the ball that that hit, um, I'm sorry, I, I, was it Shang who was last in on the It laser? was. Uh, the ball hit Shang and then hit the cameraman to kill the ball first before Jeff. The refs were united. Taps by Jeff Chivinko. Team USA does thrive on the momentum. Team Malaysia has shown a great ability to stay calm in the face of adversity. Team USA now working that clock. Yeah, and they get to control the tempo. That's big. So we'll see some aggressive shots perhaps coming out from Team Malaysia. I don't think we'll see as many counters. Oh, Mike McGee hit out. He tried to keep those legs tucked up under him as he jumped. But it's hard to tuck everything away from the throws sometimes. Yeah. Such athletic dodging from both sides. This, this is top level play. Oh. Two! Yeah, we saw Robert trying to establish control of that ball with his foot even to kick it back up. And we see Hargan, Ravachandran, a little upset right now. It's natural for the frustration to kick in when your team is down, but got to keep things composed. That, uh, that hacky sack attempt to keep that ball up was impressive. Oh, man. I mean, I wanted that to work just because it looked so cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Whatever it takes to keep that ball in play and give yourself or a teammate a chance for that ricochet catch. Give me all of the great plays. I want to lose my voice. It's day six. I, this is the gold medal match. I don't, I don't need to talk after this. We're, uh, I have news for you. We're going to get you to do the cloth game afterward. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh. Referee is still talking it over. We will probably get an update on what that huddle's about. I don't... We hear a lot of noise from the crowd. Yeah. It's hard to tell what it is. While this uh, intermission takes place and the refs make a discussion, you can follow us at World Dodgeball Federation on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And you can follow us at World Dodgeball on Twitch. Refs convening, making sure the ref's job here is to make sure the game stays on its tracks. There has been some uh, chatter back and forth, some frustrations. The refs just want to make sure everything is going smoothly. This is the gold medal match, by the way. The second half, eight minutes and 40 seconds left on that clock. It's going to be a frustrating time. It's either both teams are going home after this. It's just a matter of what color the medal is. Uh, the sidelines are called in. For a bit more conversation with the officials. That is head referee Ian Asang talking about stuff with those sidelines. I'd imagine a healthy dose of it is, I don't want to see your team trying to call out the other team. Leave that to us. Coach Lou, Coach Furlong, and Captain uh, Gunting from Team Malaysia as well all in that huddle. That's interesting, on Malaysia, the coaches rarely get into the huddle. It's almost always the, uh, the player who is captaining. Varies a little bit with the teams. The crowd is anxious to see the action resume. Once again, the two early matches from today 
Uh, the bronze medal ones were two of the greatest matches I have ever seen. Did you get to catch those? I sure did. I was on the stream for both of them. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, uh, commentated one with you. Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's all running together. Yeah, no, we... You've... Yeah. Sorry. Every, every day is running together. No, usually, uh, you know, the morning streams, you, you pick up the second match, and then... Uh, it's been a long week. Yeah, all of us athletes, uh, the volunteers, everybody here is going to take some good long rest, I'm sure, after this event has concluded. Yeah, we're going... Let's, uh, let's shout out the teams here. The rest are all volunteers from all over the world. Uh, the media team is the ones that are keeping us informed with everything, letting us know uh, what's going on on the floor. We can't do this without them. Uh, the teams, like no one, no one's walking away with, with any prize money or anything like that. This is all for pride and uh, passion of this sport. They train all year round just to, to have the, the best matches they can and walk away saying they're the best or they're the best them that they were and they, they left it on the, all on the court. And also, we want to show our appreciation to the folks running this stream, helping us sound good to all of you listening at home. <laughs> this is still a long huddle. This is one of the longest huddles from the refs I've seen. We still see Coach Lucas talking about things. Captain Gunting is in there as well. And We're just... Yeah. Hopefully this will pick up again soon. are back. We're off the rush. Giovinco picking up that loose ball. Team USA on the offensive, but still working the clock as much as they can. Hashimoto and Giovinco taking the throws. <laughs> Huang drew it in, and we see Huang's the one he chucks. Giovinco with a fake to drive him back. Team USA, I fully expect they're still gonna be working that clock. Okay, in the huddle, the ball had bounced before uh, it hit a seed row. So it hit the ground, it bounced up, and then a seed row pocketed it. It was not a clean shot. Nice jump. I have a feeling the huddle wasn't just about that. A lot of it was about uh, the player conduct, wanting to make sure everybody, you can be fired up, but you can't direct that across the line verbally or pointingly at the other team. Save it for the dodgeballs. Oh, Perez just gets hit as he falls back. Chivingo counters, comes up short. Three on three. Ooh, nice dodge there by Hashimoto. Uh, I don't know how he does that. That's, I, that's all I can say. I don't know how he does that. He's got the cheat codes. <laughs> Long shots from each side. So far, nobody connecting. Team Malaysia is going to look to take a few of these because they do need to try and capitalize when they can. Otherwise, Team USA will be able to sit back and try and nurture the lead. Oh, we see aggressive safe. play. Everybody's still safe. Karagaran hit. He is upset. And another one. Bong is out as well, leaving just Shang. Very. Very confident play there by Hashimoto. Coach Luton will slow it down. Same thing. Ref's going to convene. Right, we've got a lot of reactions from the crowds and the sidelines. Yeah. Everybody talking about some stuff again. Sheng still in there for Team Malaysia. Kind of pacing around with the two balls in hand, one on the ground. Okay, we see uh, we see Captain Kreider talking to the three uh, Americans left on the court: Hashimoto, Dylan Clark, Odin, Jeff Giovinco, pumping them up. Longtime veteran, something like 15 years. Yeah, Kreider obviously making a name for himself in a bunch of ways including as a member of Team Doom. The 
officials talking things over. And they break. Uh, it doesn't look like anything is changing on the court. So we will see a three on one. Currently favored for the American side. Just under seven minutes remaining in this match. Team USA ahead by four points. It's going to be on Shang to try and bring it back. This is another important potential swing point. Team USA can secure it, then that deficit is going to be very imposing for Malaysia. You see the, uh, the Malaysia block. Gets tapped out. Yeah, Shang just grazed. You see a conciliatory pat from uh, Captain Gunting. Time out is called by Malaysia. Time out inside of Malaysia. So they may need to switch their style pretty significantly now. Five points. Well, really, they need four points to give themselves a chance to tie it up. Four points in six and a half minutes is doable. But, I mean, Tough. I don't think we're going to see Team USA send their players up to get too exposed to get to get hit by too many of those uh, shots that are a bit easier. They're going to they're going to make sure that Malaysia has to earn it if they're going to do it. Yeah, this is this is all literally in the hands of Team Malaysia to to put the pressure on and come up with things. Yeah, and I mean they're talking about what strategy they're going to use to do it. Team USA is still in the huddle. Let's give a shout out to the teams that were here, going from left to right on this uh, on the flags hanging from the ceiling. Uh, Italy, Great Britain, New Zealand, Norway, uh, Australia, Argentina, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Canada, the United States, and the host country, Mexico. Yeah, this is the biggest world championships I've been a part of. The longest one I've been a part of. I'm, there's a reasonable chance you folks can hear it in our voices. <laughs> we've, had to, we've had to power through with a lot of tea and honey. The athletes, of course, investing a little more than we are. There's a hit. Clark Odin knocked out. We're looking for a cough drop and tea sponsor. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, sponsor our stream. Sponsor the sport. We'll help these athletes. Wong getting a ball. Coming up to the middle. He's the one who throws. Ooh, almost connects with Hashimoto. Reads the jump. Almost connects. Yeah, this side is very good at drawing out the dodges from their opponents. Hashimoto, very nimble dodger, though. And we see McGee hit out. Five balls for the side of the United States. Four players on the court. Haragaran. Five on the side of Malaysia. Haragaran gets that ball. He throws it. All six for Team USA now. U.S. running the clock as is their prerogative as the ones leading this match. See Haragar and showing catch if necessary. Still good dodging from both sides. Malaysia doesn't want to let the United States run away with this anymore. They want to put the brakes on it. Even if they don't win, they want to make this as close as possible. They, they want to know they left the ball on the court. And, you know, if they learn something here on how to, to beat the Americans, and, even if they don't win, they're going home with valuable in intel on the other side. Yeah, unfortunately at that point, they would need to try and use it next year, so. Yeah. They are still going to be doing their best. Whoa, a big catch! by Haragan! And a hit on Giovinko. Giovinko! And the grab by Haragar, and they're right at his knees. You see a block from Ketchum. Kreider on the court still with him. The special K's. <laughs> I think we call it the KK double play. Now it will be Team USA's throw one more time. They've got the extra ball. Ooh, close. Trying to stay safe, getting under it twice. Ooh, very close to the back line. Kreider, very aware where he needs to stay. Five balls on the side of the United States. Oh, and that's a hit. Well, I thought it was a hit, but perhaps not. And we get another referee's talk. A 
believe the crowd just wants this match to continue. But that's, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the sentiment I'm getting. Um, yeah. You can follow us at World Dodgeball on Twitch, World Dodgeball Federation on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah, I'm not sure from the replay there, but... Refs have called them safe. Yeah. All right, we are back at it. Malaysia. Quite a few players, but only one ball right now. You see Shang uh, windmilling those arms a little bit. And Team USA content to spend time. Because at this point... That's all that, I need to do. Yeah, that five-point edge is a lot. Shang threatening at the line, trying to bait out a bad play, but Kreider uh, not likely to give him one. That United States sideline still looks nervous though. Whoop! Yeah. Haragaran doing what I think is a smart thing. He stayed up at the line and at least made it possible to get the catch, even though he absorbed two shots real hard. That was, uh, that was a shot from catching at a distance that I would not want to be at. Yeah, making sure at this level of play, you don't want to take it easy on your opponents, obviously. Gunting with the block. Under three minutes remaining. Team USA playing it safe. Captain Kreider. That skips a little bit short. Yeah. Still going to be a defensive moment. Pressure from the captain trying to keep catching alive. Team USA with that 8-3 to three lead. No need to rush things. Catch him, likely to reset it here. There's a catch! Kreider alone. Yeah, so he's still going to try to work the clock, but Malaysia at least one more player giving themselves the options. Another There's one! Another catch! Well, and that is what Malaysia needed to do. They are well behind. Three points in two minutes is going to be tough. But squaring up to those catches. Ryder looking very frustrated with himself, giving up that catch. Yeah, probably not quite where he wanted to place the ball. He did have six players to aim at, though. There's always going to be someone wherever you put that ball, so. Yeah. Good job by the uh, Malaysian squad lining up behind the players that were... Uh, they were a bit further up. And I think that is a false, false start. start. That's two. Yeah. They have to play a player down. Yeah, so they, they will be capped at five players for this point. We see a timeout called by Team USA. Timeout. Timeout USA. Yeah, one of the rules that was added in, uh, I think, last year for Los Angeles, players do have to have throws uh, that are an honest try to at least potentially getting someone out. You cannot just fritter away time by throwing balls that have no hope of hitting anyone. Obviously, there are throws that slip. There are total misfires, but the referees will use their discretion. Uh, we saw... I only saw one warning in this tournament, which was on Kreider, uh, for throws that looked like they weren't a serious effort to connect. But yeah, it is on the books just in case the refs need that as a tool to keep play moving. Um, we do have a question from the, the chat, by the way, uh, which is, uh, what is the, uh, when is a player out? Let's, let's put it that way. Um, the answer is it's not when, when balls connect. So, for instance, in that 1v1 trade, it wasn't when the balls connected. It's when the ball that hits that player hits the ground and dies. The player is alive until the ball that hits them uh, touches the ground or another object. Yeah, that is why those pop-up catches are a possibility. The ball is still live until it hits the ground or an object. It is not rendered dead by hitting a player or a ball held by a player. I McGee think, getting yeah. tapped out. And I think Kreider. we're finding the foot on Kreider. No, he is still in. Catch him with a throw. Kreider with the pressure. Clark Godin with a throw. Yeah, this is actually more throwing than I expected from Team USA right now. Although maybe they think the lead is secure. There are 90 seconds remaining. And that is an attempt, all right, from Sheng. T 
Team USA coming up. It's Ketchum. Haragaran casually jumping over that one. Yeah, CK putting the pressure back. CK with the throw. Haragaran as well. And Team USA looks like they're going to end the gold medal reign of Team Malaysia. They'll keep it at a three, Pete. I mean, silver's nothing to sneeze, sneeze at, but I'm sure Team Malaysia came in here expecting gold. Team USA hits out Haragaran. Catch him with the long shot. 50 foot. Gets a thumbs up from his target. A lot of respect for each other by these two sides. Well, we see a little bit of a flurry. Goon team kind of spinning the ball around. Nice shot by Catch him. Another 50 foot shot. Yeah, Shang heads over to the side. 20 seconds remaining before we'll be able to make it nearly official. Three balls for each side. Five people on the court for America. We'll still see a flurry for fun, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, catch him, hit out. It doesn't really matter too much, though. This is all for uh, just to walk away winning the last game. The United States has clinched the gold medal. They'll walk away the new champions, both in the men's and the women's division. Stay tuned Ooh, for uh, an exhibition on uh, cloth dodgeball. That'll be right after this between Great Britain and Mexico. The host country transitioning over to the next host country, passing the torch. It's probably neither the time nor the place. Well, never mind. We'll see a Jeff little celebratory backflip as Team USA ends this match officially. They take gold, ending the three-year reign of Team Malaysia as the men's champions. Team Malaysia will go home with silver. Not what they were hoping for. Team Malaysia, obviously, one of the uh, teams that you would have had to pick as a potential gold medalist, and they came oh so close. But Team USA just executing a little bit better in these finals, able to put up a few points before taking it 9-3. to three. Team Malaysia beat the United States in the round robin with a three or four point advantage. They were absolute opponents for this United States squad. They started off great with a 2 or 3-0 -oh lead. Yep. Yeah, Malaysia started uh, pretty strong. Uh, Team USA showing good fortitude to bring it back. Congratulations to Team USA. This is the 2019 Dodgeball World Championships. And we do still have a little bit of additional stuff here for you on the stream. Thank you to everyone here that made this possible. From the reps, to the, the staff, the media team, everyone that does everything behind the scenes. The, the yeah, there are a lot of people commentary. involved in making this kind of event happen. The players who train all year round, the coaches, the managers, the, the families that are all here to support their players. Every country that played, all, oh man, what is it? 11, 12 countries that are here are, all the players are here watching and supporting these, these teams. Yeah, this is the pinnacle of dodgeball. Happens once a year. One of the most fun times a year for, for a lot of us. Even if it is a long event, it is 100% worthwhile to be here to watch it and to work toward getting here. Uh, we do have a little bit more content as well still coming your way. We've got that exhibition match between members of Great Britain and Team Mexico.
esquerda. Okay? DJ, DJ, música DJ.
llegamos al equipo de Reino Unido y México a jugar solar en el túnel. Una quinta, una mesa de 20% de la mini entrance.
Kasas Kalau Oh, is it on now? That's my new intro. Is it on now? <laughs> oh, it is on now. All right, all right. We are live. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, wow, okay, so U.S. just won double gold. Everybody's hyped. I'm hyped. And now uh, it's all been leading to this moment here. Uh, yeah, this forget is the key moment right here. <laughs> and the key moment is myself, Jake Mason, uh, coming together and uh, with a, a new voice to your ears. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Hi, my name's Ian. I uh, played dodgeball in London and I played for Scotland a few years ago. And I'm here to help commentate Jake, Jake today. So we'll be playing a cloth game, which is the style predominantly used in Europe. Uh, and the GB guys and the Mexico guys are mixed together to uh, help provide an exhibition game here today. Fun exhibition game. We are still going to do some, offer some commentary. I am going to uh, admire the athletes on the court, and Ian is going to uh, uh, actually explain the rules because I don't, I don't know how they, how do they differ? We've already retaped the clear lines. Yes. So do you call the, them clear lines or check lines? We we call them return lines. Return lines. So there are, you can see. Four lines, sorry, five lines in the middle of the court. So the middle line where the balls are lined up is the center line. The two lines either side of that uh, represent the neutral zone. So both players from both sides can enter that zone, which means you can move all the way up to the very front line. You can, you can see Mark there, number four for GB on the left-hand side, um, using all of the space of the court, making sure you can close the distance to your opponent. And then the other two lines, which you see a little bit further back, those are the return lines. So those are the return lines. At the start, the ball has to go behind those before the game plays. Does just the body, ball need to go, or does the, uh, your whole body need to go? The, you need to have two feet behind the line. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's make sure that there's no immediate, immediate hits from the start and teams get a chance to reset. This court is a little bit longer than usual because um, we haven't re remarked the full out, outline of the foam court. Um, normally, it would be a tucked in a little bit but it's uh, Rough, they're roughly the same dimensions so. roughly uh, a shorter I think like uh, like the women's court essentially 50, uh, 50 feet uh, US yes, what is yes. that uh, it's at least US five it's about 18 it's about 18 it's about 18 meters long in total the uh, the full court so all right um, I am uh, terrible with the metric system as are most Americans I've uh, been try I've been trying to adjust I've been living in New York for the past year so I've been having to do the mental math in my head every single day oh Oh, oh wow, that Alex was just Alex then not paying attention, takes the cheap hit. Henry Skinner with the cheap hit. Yeah. Henry Cheap, skit, cheap Hit Skinner. <laughs> um, so yes, as he said, we, we mixed up some, the Mexico team and the GB team uh, here to try to see what they would do. We do have uh, someone standing in for one of the Mexico teams. We've got uh, uh, Troy Haynes, Daddy Haynes over there. He's wearing a Mexican jersey. He has uh, played cloth for Australia before. Rules are a bit different, but the ball is not. And let's see how he can do it. Oh, he's got a weird pump fake. I love it, but oh, oh all right. Didn't, didn't fool anyone there. Straight into the well, we call it the bread basket. It's yeah. right here. Oh, same. Oh, great. So straight in there, easy catch there. Where Americans eat a lot of bread too. <laughs> <laughs> and one on uh, Henry. One on Henry there. Cheap shots. So dinner. one one difference, one probably notable difference you might see from the stream is that. Um, when you're holding a ball, your fingers and your hands count as part of the ball. So that way you can, you can block using up to roughly where your wrist starts, um, as opposed to the fingertip hits you see in foam. So then you have to be holding the ball for that to count. Uh, so then actually about that, so I know we have, I mean, I've been saying this all week, dodgeball is a sport of integrity, it's based on the honor system, there, it will never ever be a point where the honor system doesn't come into play. Okay. As we grow, we want to maintain that honor system or we just fall to pieces. Uh, the day we abandon the honor system is the day I lock myself in this gym and burn it to the ground. <laughs> but um, uh, so same thing, do you guys get problems with um, uh, people? Uh, uh, claiming, you know, hand, hand, hand when it's up their arm, stuff like that. Uh, Less honorable people than you and I. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see you sometimes. I mean, there's certainly, when, if the ball were to hit right at the bottom of the hand, like, like the very end of the forearm, 
you know, there, there is a little bit of debate there. Most people are pretty good uh, about it, um, I would say. Additionally, in the UK, we are the top league there. The Super League plays with six referees, so one in each corner wow. every single game. So that tends to... Oh! Ooh. A lovely leap of faith there from Mark Allen. Leap of faith. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, another thing, uh, a difference, is that you can... You can uh, what we used to call suicides, yes, and then now uh, are called flight kills. I like leap of faith, but if you if you connect, is it true that you can then still run back uh, and stay alive? Is that it? So in the European rules, that certainly was the case. I've been out for a, out of that system for a while now, about a year and a half or so. So I'm not sure if that's still the case. But in the UK, as soon as you as soon as you make contact with the other other team side of the court, that's you out uh, out of the game. Good, good, good. I like that. You used to call them suicides, yes. uh, which I prefer a different term. There goes another one. There we go. Oh, and, good block there. And uh, but then they they would stay in bounds after if they made a successful hit. But I'm like, that's not. They were still vulnerable to attack. But yes. to me, if you're going to take that, hey, oh, a nice successful one there. These guys are so happy to be able to do that. They're, they <laughs> they love that. Um, I tried once and I almost broke my ankle. It is, it is surprisingly difficult. It um, is. You have to get a lot of coordination to get it right. We used to have them in a local league and I removed them from my West Hollywood league because people would see a really talented player do it and then they would try and we had literally, I'm not joking, two broken ankles from it. We don't have a lot of injuries in dodgeball. Honestly, not as many as you'd think. That was one. Um, off the rush, also another difference is that you, they, seem to, they each rush for, well explain the rush. So on the rush you get uh, the two balls on the left hand side as you line up, so the two on, two on the left, as opposed to the, the right hand side that you have in foam, so that's one difference. Just like how you drive, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, transatlantic rivalry never gets old. Um, never. <laughs> and the centre ball is a contested ball. Now that runoff just there was not contested by uh, the team on the right hand side. But, oh, Scotty oh. caught high up the court there. Takes his, takes his out. Scotty, not Scott. Uh, it's Scotty Whitelaw, yeah. Scotty. The indoor specialist does prefer does prefer Scotty for the most part. So. But he's cool with White Claw. He does he does quite enjoy White Claw as a nickname. That's a new one that he's, he's uh, been given here. And uh, for the guys listening in the UK back home, if we can make that stick, that would just be fantastic. fantastic. I want to hear that by the time I get to Glasgow. Uh, we've got a good, good uh, nine months or so, so hopefully so. <laughs> Sorry, I, I did interrupt you there, but uh, so uh, you were saying, and then there's the one ball in the middle, which is uh, apparently free for all. Yes, yeah. So you see, you'll see um, the teams both run and contest it for that ball. For the t for the two balls which are yours, that you can have one foot over the center line. For the ball that you contest in the middle, you have to keep both feet behind the line to stop players running into each other. Yes. Which is one of the most common things we see for newer teams or newer players. Just they go charging in full speed and then realize that they have to stop very quickly. Yes. You know, um, you have to accelerate and decelerate very fast. In in the states we used to have, you'd run for the full seven or the full five or six or however many yeah. you play with. And uh, oh, Kirby's saying it bounce. Uh, you we had. Again, we don't get a lot of injuries in dodgeball, but that was where they would happen. A lot of heads crashing into each other, yeah. uh, fingers getting stepped on. Uh, we had a guy slide in my league and, and slide into a woman's nose and break their nose. Yeah. So that was eliminated. In 2012, I thought, why don't we bring that back? And on the very first rush, a guy broke his finger. So we do not play that way. Yeah, the um, we haven't really... At the top leagues, you don't see too many injuries on the like the sliding in variety. Um, yeah, these are rec most, leagues mostly. Yeah. yeah, most most people tend to tend to stop. Um, occasionally, you get some like hands kind of scratching around there. You know, I've certainly mistimed a few and hit hit the op opposition player, and likewise on me. So, um, I think it's good. It, it, it gives a an element of uncertainty at the beginning of the game. Who's going to win it? If you win it cleanly. You get, a, you get like a free attack, so. Well, we saw here like all week, basically the opening rush made a huge difference for most teams. Like yes. uh, I was saying the Australia versus US men's game, I was watching uh, whoever controlled that opening rush and made the first hit won the match every time. Oh yeah, and I. So uh, I would imagine it's the same with that ball, you know. You, so generally speaking, the, the ball, if you, if you win it cleanly from the middle, you'll pass it back, you'll kind of flick it back like a, a snap in American football and uh, there'll be a guy running in behind, pick the ball up, the guy who's just run on their side of the mid ball in the middle, who hasn't won it, is obviously a bit of an easier target. You try and take him out. That used to be uh, my job, actually. Oh yeah? Are you fast? <laughs> uh, I was, I don't, not, yeah. anymore, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was too. I used to always be the, do the rush until I realized that I'm 40. 
and um, <laughs> not so much anymore. I yeah, mean, I still do, but there's uh, there's uh, guys in the Super League now. You know, they're 21, 22, and they're coming out of the, and they're just in amazing shape and very, very fast. We saw that all week. Elijah Hashimoto, all these like the young Malaysian players bending their bodies in ways I didn't think was humanly possible. Oh yeah, I, I, I this is a. Uh, <laughs> Quickly, uh, the, the youth is, the, like the kids growing up, like we all started playing in our 20s, like what was like amazing 10 years ago is these kids are picking up and like by the time they're 18, they're better than yeah, we were when yeah, they're 30. Yeah. Well, I mean 30. How old are you now? I'm 27. 27. You're willing to admit that on stream? I am willing to admit that, yes. Uh, Feeling old I, had to, I had to think about it though. <laughs> I try, it's time to forget. That starts um, to happen too. Your memory goes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that happened ages ago, actually. A very poor memory, but... The uh, oh, Scotty, nope. Scotty getting a, bit, a little bit of a press at the front. Uh, we should have named these teams before we started. Well, that's true. So let's look on, Great. look on the right hand side. So number 14 for Scotty Whitelaw, plays for East Anglia Vikings. Um, I'll go through the GB players on that side. Uh, Henry Skinner, number two, at uh, the line fake in there. Um, plays for Meteors, the current reigning Super League champions. Um, now sneaking up with the ball on the left-hand side, Alex Harrison. He's um, a long-time England player. Uh, has won European Championships, Six Nations, multiple titles. He's one of the most successful players, I think, uh, coming out of the UK. Nice. Um, oh. 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 We're looking for it. Uh -huh. Excellent leap of faith there by Scotty. That was excellent. I do like leap of faith a lot. Um, uh, had he... Had he uh, well, yeah, we, we did talk about that. I'm sorry. I was thinking another rule difference there. It went away from me. Apologies, everybody. Um, it's been a long week. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a list of few of the rules. I'll try and point them out when they come up. Uh, oh, 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 pop-ups. Um, that's what I was going to say. So pop-ups. Yes. If it uh, hits, let's say I, I throw, I hit Henry. Yep. Uh, it pops up in the air. His teammate catches it. Yep. He's safe, or is he still out? Because you can only save yourself? or You can only save yourself. So Henry, was, Henry would still be out. Um, Henry, yeah, Henry, Henry got the out box. There's no like chain catch kind of thing that you guys have in foam. Um, it did used to be a save kind of rule. You'd save a player, but um, now it's just if you're hit, you're out. Um, but there is there is probably one difference on the pop-ups. If the ball were to go, let's say it hits Henry and goes out of off court, mm -hmm. um, if he were to jump, catch the ball in midair, make a secure catch, so two hands on the ball, and referees decide it's secure. That counts as a catch. He doesn't have to ground two parts of his body within the court to um, have it count. Okay. Um, he just has to display. He just uh, has to display control. Control. Okay. Um, which does lead to sometimes some spectacular catches being made, either players jumping off the side of the court or even into the opposition zone because they can try and dive and catch. As long as they catch it in midair, it'll count as a catch, now, and the other guy will be out. Now, if Aiden right here, if he yeah. throws a hit, Henry, oh, which he did. Yeah. <laughs> if Aiden Woodall uh, hit him, it popped up and his teammate caught him, so he'd still be out. Would Aiden still be in? Does the catch count in any the way, catch, shape, or form? The catch would count, so Aiden would, Aiden would be out on that side, yes. and one player would come back in on uh, Henry's side. Okay, so the only difference is that you must save yourself, but if he did yes. catch it himself, it would be a catch. Yes. All right. Yes. Good to know, good yeah, to know. It's, uh, so, I, I think the size of this court is making things a little difficult, it's normally a little bit tighter. Um, these cloth, these cloth balls don't tend to fly quite as fast as the foam balls. Um, the top speed tends to be, for well, the top players at least, is 60, 70 miles an hour. Kind of tops out about 70. Um, you can get some good swing on them, not as much as foam ball, but you can get it to curl and swing in the air. But most of these balls do fly straight, so there's much more emphasis on the kind of teamwork element of the game as opposed to maybe the pure throwing ability of a player. Um, Any hit by Johnny nice. there. Any advice for uh, on throwing? Uh, I know, like it's hard for me personally. It's hard for me to hold these balls. Yes. Uh, I I tend to uh, put a thumb on the uh, the nip the nipple of the ball. The, yep. uh, the and valve. Yeah. The valve. There we go. Better word. And um, uh, I know some people rely on whatever logo may be printed. Yep. Um, any other? I mean, if you don't have ginormous hands or, or big strong manly hands like you do, <laughs> what what is what do us common folk have to do? I have piano fingers. This my, my dad is very upset I don't play piano. Still like long. Quite long fingers. Yes. Piano. Um, yeah, so I, I tend to always grip it so I have the, the valve kind of in my, um, just about the base of my index finger, for, so gripping kind of by my knuckle on the inside. And I have one face of the ball 
and then try and get one finger in each corner of it so I can really grip and squeeze it that way. So more on the seam? Yes, yeah, so more in the seams is generally how most players will hold it. So it's a bit far away to see it probably properly on the stream. I, there, I, yeah, it's too far, but maybe... Oh, uh, oh. We Alex can do an Instagram close-up of that, actually, after this. We should go do an Instagram tutorial of how to hold the ball. Yeah, I mean, the guys there will be happy to help you. I mean, they all have slightly different preferences in how they uh, hold it. Like, one, holding, having your thumb on the valve, for example, is a good way of getting some curve on it, because when the ball, when you throw the ball, your thumb is not, will naturally be the last thing to kind of rip off the ball and add some rotation to it. So. Nice. Yeah, I, 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 it takes me a while. It took me a while. I trained with the U.S. team for Atlantic Cup. Uh, we went and uh, I was trying to, it, it, it's definitely hard. I have to consciously think about where I'm holding it, whereas uh, any other dodgeball, you can kind of just pick it up. I tend to try to put my uh, finger on the valve of any ball, especially like a rubber ball. Mm, yeah, um, get some good spin that way. Yeah, and I just like to have a play. And for me, it's a, a mental thing, I think. It's more like, okay, this is how I prepare to throw. I don't know how much it actually helps my throw, but... Um, uh, I, I do have to think about these, I have to hold it, I have to rotate it, so I'm not able to pick it up off the ground and just go for it. Um, does that come with just practice, or is it come na did it come naturally to you? Uh, so I played, I played football as a kid, or soccer. Um, uh, so I, I've been used to, uh, kind of, and I played in goal as well, so I'm used to kind of throwing, throwing things around. So to start with, I kind of had that sling kind of style that uh, goalkeepers use to throw a ball out. And kind of over my first year playing, gradually built up because you need a kind of a hand strength and a forearm strength to, to grip it. Um, and this was when the balls were big as well. These balls here are seven inches in diameter. Um, before we used to use eight inches, which were very big and very hard for people to hold, actually. Um, or oh, a massive false start from Alex. Oh, I love it. There. I didn't even realize there were refs. There's refs and yes, ball retrievers. Two refs and ball retrievers all the way around. So Not shaggers, ball retrievers. Ball retrievers. Very yes, important difference. Very, very First time we heard that at uh, the World Cup in Manchester, um, it was very entertaining. Lots, of giggles. Lots, lots of giggles. Lots of giggles. Lots of giggles yes. That's what Dodgeball's all about, ball jokes and... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Oh! Just, so, just to illustrate what happens in a false start there. Um, oh yeah, that's different. Go yeah, ahead. that is different. So, the, the centre ball will be given to the team that did not false start. So, generally speaking, the and that ball is live instantly. So, what happens is... Most teams will put the ball opposite the guy who's going to run on the other side, and as soon as the whistle goes, they'll charge, basically charge the, the other team to either hit the guy who's going to run for the balls that, on their side or stand over and guard them, and then a team can have all five balls uh, to start with in the half. Johnny there displaying his extreme height. I mean... And show, basically showing off to everyone. I said it all week. The, the, the GB team was really uh, hard. At first, you can see how far away we are, first off, from the court. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to see people. Now, after a week of practice, I've got it down. Uh, don't don't ask the Malaysians to confirm that because I was horrible. But uh, lots of tall, tall, skinny white boys on the GB team yeah. uh, with massive wingspans, though, and just could whip the ball. Uh, Their well, height definitely comes in handy. Johnny's got a bit of a trebuchet style. Um, he's, uh, he's over two meters, and he can really... Uh, really hurled that ball very, very fast. And you can do it with the foam balls too. Um, and because of the height is coming down from it, it often lines up against uh, kind of, let's say, upper chest area of uh, those who are of a, that's a more average. Do height. headshots count? Yes, headshots, headshots do count, but intentional headshots will earn you a yellow card. So good. One, um, one difference here is that you can get, there's like penalties. So if you have like a very minor infringement, say, a repeated uh, error of not going out when you're called for a hit. Um, you'll just see some players wrongly carry on playing. That can earn you, or argue with the referee, that can earn you a blue card. That's two minutes in a the sin. card? Yeah, it's two minutes in the sin bin. Ha, uh, I like when that, it's, sin bin. Yeah, and when it's a yellow card, that's five minutes in the sin bin. And a red card is an ejection from the game. Fun fact, they used to call my, my bedroom the sin bin. <laughs> um, and yeah, correct, a, a, a blue card would earn you. Yeah, I bet somewhere. you've got uh, some wild stories, Joe. I have a backpack full of blue cards ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, because um, obviously headshots are, headshots are going to happen. It's just a case of, so for example, if... Oh, oh yeah. a nice catch on the floor there. By, yeah. oh, and a hit, well done. The cleaner cleaner in action there. Oh, is Aiden, is Aiden Woodall trying to take our job on the microphone there? 
Is that what, is that what he's earned? Oh, Aiden. He just, he loves the attention. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, we didn't invite him up. He said he could play, and this is how he pays us. Yeah, I know. He's trying to shout over us. Yeah, well, we have more followers than you do. <laughs> Bro. Well, speaking of which, if anyone <laughs> would like to follow us, it's uh, at Brit Dodgeball um, on Instagram and British Dodgeball on Facebook. And the GB team is at GB Dodgeball. Um, and similarly, it's GB, GB Dodgeball on Facebook as well. And uh, follow all your local federa all your federations, everybody you saw here this week, uh, at Federation Mexica Mexicana Dodgeball, at USA Dodgeball, at Dodgeball Canada, Dodgeball New Zealand, MAD, Malaysia Dodgeball, Dodgeball Italy, uh, Do Ar Dodgeball Argentina. It's pretty easy to find us. Uh, HK Dodgeball on Instagram. I messed that one up, though. Uh, and uh, I own it. And... Um, just, yes, follow your leagues, spread the word, share the content. Uh, British Dodgeball has amazing content they release, yes, so yeah. I share. And, yeah. yeah, there's free, there's loads of photos, loads of videos. We're generally playing tournaments or league meetings every week. Every club will be filming stuff and posting stuff up, so it's a really good, vibrant scene in the UK. So Absolutely. I like your, your social media is, is on point. Uh, for sure. Well, there'll be plenty of it coming uh, on the... Oh, that's a lovely shot there. Straight on Joe Brown's ankles. Wow, uh, Andy Mercado, as far as I know, has never played Buck before. Uh, he grew up in uh, rubber leagues. He started playing eight, or no sting rubber in rec leagues in LA. 8.5 oh. rubber for elite foam uh, to get on Team Mexico. He started playing foam. And now cloth. Now he's got the cloth bug. Look at that. He'll be there, he'll be there in Glasgow. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Not to we'll speak see. to the uh, yeah. process, but uh, he did perform pretty well. I would imagine he would come back to Team Mexico. I would. Oh, can you kick it? Can you kick it like uh, that? Not officially speaking. <laughs> uh, you're not supposed to kick the balls um, either you know, to a teammate or out, out to the opposition. That'll get you an out. Oh, look. I'm probably a simbin as well. Look who we got there. We got Pyong, we got Nate Kreider, and uh, Glenn Spacer. Nate Kreider and Glenn came to Atlanta Cup and played cloth. But yeah, so it'll get you a penalty if you kick it. Sorry. Yes. I didn't mean no, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's good, to, it's good to see other teams joining in, even if they are in disguise as uh, Scotty and Kirby, by the looks of things. Pyong's taking Kirby's jersey. So. <laughs> um, yeah. So on, just on Glasgow to give it a bit of a hype up whilst I'm here. Uh, so it's the 1st to the 6th of September next year. There'll be 12 teams in each division, so that's foam and cloth, uh, men and women. Um, so 48 teams in total, six days, which will promise to be a, a really good time at the Emirates Arena in uh, Scotland, Woo! in Glasgow. So. It's going to be amazing. Uh, also, the uh, first time, the end, uh, this, this tournament here. Lovely marks, catch there by Nate. This tournament here marks the end of uh, the World Dodgeball Federation's just open play uh, format. Next year, everything goes to invitations. Is it invitational? Uh, I believe it's been it's invitational and it'll be uh, worked out as to who, who, who is gets invited an invite. from there. We're making it up as we go. Um, but um, it, I mean, that's what literally that's is. Right. Yeah. But um, oh, 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 oh. Presenting there. Presenting for sure for Spacer. They've been there. Uh, but yes, uh, it, there will be. Uh, it's great when we see. I like seeing Norway here because, first off, we've yes. never had Norway here. So we got to have two European countries here. But uh, the other thing is that. They might not have been dodgeball players, huh? Three. GB, Italy, and oh, Norway. Italy, Italy, Italy. Oh, oh, they're gonna kill me. I love you, Italy. <laughs> um, oh. And uh, but it, it, they might not have been like a, a big team. They have not all had a lot of practice. They never played together yeah. before. But they came here with their hundreds of thousands of followers. Yeah. And they uh, they played. They exposed. They they did it for exposure. They did it to grow the sport in their local uh, country. Same with Argentina last year. And uh, Italy before that, and all these all these countries. So it's great. Uh, unfortunately, as we grow, we just can't keep letting everyone in. Yeah, so. it's gonna have to have a qualification process. I mean, the European Championships last year had 17. Oh, sorry, earlier this year had 17 countries represented. Um, uh, yeah, and it only continues to grow. I mean, Norway weren't there, and oh, oh, oh lovely behind him. the back. Just, you know, <laughs> don't see that very often. That a high, a high risk move from Pyong there. A Pyong already amazing me, and he's played cloth for all of 30 seconds. <laughs> he is a legend. Very, very agile player. Yes. He, was very, he was very hard to hit for, for the boys when they played in Malaysia both, both times. I have two Pyong jerseys, and I wear them with absolute pride. Um, 
Yeah, uh, so so yeah, we couldn't add everybody in our six days already. Yes. We were here for, for what feels like an eternity. Um, although it's, really it's been great. All the G boys have GB boys have absolutely loved their experience here and it's been really great to meet everyone that we haven't met before and uh, See, a very different style of dodgeball to what we're used to. It's been it's been really really good. And you guys still came out. You still uh, uh, did well. You made yeah. you know made it to yeah, through to playoffs. Stocks, yeah. well, your first game though was against Malaysia, correct? Uh, USA. Oh, I mean, sorry. That oh, that was rough. Their, so their first that outing, if you didn't rough. see, was against USA. And not only is that a strong team, uh, clearly gold medal champions, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. also you had three injuries on the GB team yeah, in one yeah. match, kind of putting a, a, a dampener on the rest of the day. Um, it did make it did make things difficult. Uh, Alex and uh, Kirby took some pretty serious injuries for the day and had to rest up. Actually, Alex had to take two days out. Yeah, um, Henry it. managed to play play through his finger like jam, which is a fairly common injury you'll see um, see in cloth or Do you guys allow uh, taping for injuries? For injuries, yes. Uh, so you'll see players. You can kind of see Henry's fingers are taped together. Number two for GB. He's take for the injury, but you can't have tape like uh, goat tape or anything like that. Uh, no chalk, no gel, nothing like that. Well, you said, but you can't tape for injuries, right? You can, yes. Okay, because uh, that's what we use goat tape for. It's not, it's not sticky on the outside. It's just, uh, but you can't use it for grip. Oh. I, uh, I found it. So I, I played a couple rounds of elite this year, and I, used, I found goat tape to be quite useful for on the ends of my fingers. Uh, to stop with my like nails moving. Like, yeah, off, for 8.5 rubber, yeah. yeah, like to save your nails. Wasn't so much for the no, uh, for the no sting balls. So. We do have some people with um, beautiful manicures and big long nails that play dodgeball. Yeah. Even in rec dodgeball, though, he's just cover their hands with goat tape. And uh, uh, good. I'm all about preventing injuries, uh, so I'm a big fan of the taping. Yeah. Uh, you can chalk, but like liquid chalk only, I'm assuming? No chalk at all. No chalk at all. No chalk at all. So if you I see sweaty palms, it's uh, rubbed, on the, rubbed on the shorts or get, get the water off your hands if that's what you like. Oh! oh! Wonderful catch from Henry there to end the game. It's, it's currently 12-6, uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, that team over that team. <laughs> The left-hand side team, which the roster is changing at a rapid oh, pace. I think, we've gone, to, yeah. I think we've gone through about 14 players at this point. It just went to 12-8, uh, so that game counted for two. Yes, yeah, uh, so a win, <laughs> a win of a frame counts as two points. You, oh. can, you can tie frames because they have a three-minute timer on each individual game. Um, and at the end of three minutes, if the players on each side are tied, that counts as a tie, and each time gets one point to the overall uh, score. Yeah, who's that talking over us? That is Alex Bembridge, who uh, has been reveling in his uh, showmanship duties this weekend. What is, uh, so literally everyone on our team is just jealous of us on the microphone. Wow. Is that it? We have a bigger crowd, it? frankly, so uh, yes, Alex so. can keep talking all he likes. You can talk oh, over us like a full start, so you can see Nate Kreiter with the ball in the bottom right of your screens there. Oh, he's he's going to charge towards the middle, I would He's probably respect. looking to light up Merrickwin over I there. I think he's going to look up, uh, yeah. Or you think he's going to go for... I think he's, no, he's going to go. I think he's going to run and we're going to see a hit. Here we go. Oh! oh never, never pull back. That, that, was, was, that was very nice. That's your coach, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Is oh, that was your coach. Je yes, <laughs> Jay J Stee, the uh, Valiant GB coach, has been... Uh, Given a game today, he's put himself put himself in, and he's having a good time. He plays uh, plays in Scotland. You know what we uh, should have done? Oh, we should have done this sure. on the beach. Oh, unfortunately, the cloth balls don't last very well in uh, in uh, out, out outdoor conditions, shall we say? But we have done a lot on the beach before. We, sh we should have brought no sing rubber balls. Yes. And okay, let's do that tomorrow. Uh, beach I tournament fly challenge. I fly home tomorrow. Get off my stream. Get off my stream. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. We'll go back to work. Uh, heartbroken. All right. Well, whatever. Work. Uh, I just, clearly your priorities are for your career, not for this relationship. That's fine. That's fine. I'm Moving sorry. back onto the game. Uh, <laughs> Aiden here about to unleash an absolute cannon. Boom. Oh, he's missed. When you do the beach cup, do you still use foam, foam balls, the big beach cup in Europe? They are. Oh, I've never been. I'm, I'm not sure what balls they use, actually. Um, uh, failed tombstone for Aiden there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what balls they use at the uh, Dodge Fest. 
Um, it's fun to watch Brianna Lennon wind up as strong like that, but then throw it right to the ground because she's never done this. <laughs> but sorry, you're not sure what balls is. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure what balls is. Yeah, because the cloth ones tend to degrade quite quickly. So well, foam on the beach just get torn up too. So yeah. no sting rubber. It is. Here we go. Oh, New division. Your New favorite. division. Look at that. The game is over, and it's uh, ended a oh, a very equitable 12-10 Sydney oh. team, which is let's say nominally on the right hand side <laughs> or the <laughs> upper of your screens. Uh, high fives are legal. High fives are illegal. Particularly when Johnny's showing off his fight again. Yeah. Um, look at him. Look at him. He's like, come on, Isidro, get up here. What's it? He's got, uh, he's got three brothers. Sorry, he's got two brothers as part of three. Um, it's him and Nick, and they're all just as tall, and they're all just as good. Wow. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real uh, dynasty going on. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure uh, because I've gotten to listen to your beautiful accent for this last uh, 20, yeah, my voice 20 minutes. voice is gone. You're shouting in here. I don't know how you're doing. I don't know how I'm doing actually <laughs> at all. Uh, thank you so much. Follow at Brit Dodgeball on Instagram, at British Dodgeball on Facebook, at World Dodgeball Federation. Uh, we'll do a cloth, a cloth, a little cloth, uh, how to hold a ball the tutorial I'll go do. And then up next we have the medal ceremony. So I will not be here for that. I'm not going to commentate on that. You all know how that works. I'm going to go celebrate with my team. You absolutely should. It's well deserved. They played very well the entire weekend. I mean, it's been a fantastic tournament. So. I've been very proud. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys in Glasgow. See you in Glasgow.
Second place in the same division, the team of Malaysia.
Team of Malaysia! 
Now it's time to know the MVPs of this World Championship. 